This is going really well, actually. I kind of... I was kind of hoping I'd be invaded by now just to get it done with more than anything. Uh, but, yeah, whatever. It sucked to get invaded right now, though. That'd be a pain. I'm jinxing myself, I know it, but... Whatever. Right, so onwards, and upwards, and twirling. Wait a minute. Yeah, Carford's uh, flame marks my first. Hey, buddy. So, you might have heard a summon sign sound. That's because there is. One, that is. So that's the parry stance. They will parry you a tad sooner than the animation implies, though. Kind of lame. Awkward. I was under the assumption that you needed to summon him for uh, what's coming up ahead, but now nah, you don't. And that'll be to uh, continue his quest. Because he's kind of been a... Uh, well, not busy. The opposite thing. Kind of been doing nothing. We are doing some really good damage right now. Um, so here's the procession. So we have... Uh, Big Boy. And we have Shieldman we couldn't kill off. There's some cool physics here, though. I really should have got hit, then. Game, you were too nice. I fucked the timing on my roll. That, on the other hand... Well, that was my bad, too, but... Oh, shit. I should have trusted my poise. Or rather, my, uh... Management. Of the situation. Alright, buddy. Bitch. Yeah, so, uh, there's a couple of them. Lock on range. Playing the convergence is fuck with my perspective on how the lock on range works in this game. So they, they haven't really done anything too egregious this session, surprisingly. Continuing the trend of enemies being super well behaved on camera. Um, compared to when I'm not recording. Because boy oh boy, there has been some shenanigans over the course of this playthrough that were not captured by the Elgato. Uh, so ideally, you don't want to fight both of them because that's Chainsnake up back. The Chainsnake variant. Alright, if we hit him one more time, we can probably heal. Well, he'll probably stagger. But let's pull him right back here. I have to come down here anyway. For an item. So it's not super uh, imperative to think about it now. But just for later... Keep in mind where all we found Ornstein's spear. Um, and the fact it was across the uh, the other side of the bridge. Might, uh, might be some lore implications in regards to that. You've got this weird texture that they never fixed. Looks delicious. Not intended, but you can totally jump up here. You can land on here, uh, land on here from up there, but I don't think it's ever applicable, really. So, you know what? Maybe we can get in there later. There's no bonfire, though. There is an item. And there's something way down there. You can't make it out, but there's an there is an armor set. Maybe it's the owner of the spear. It is. It, it totally is, by the way. It's a uh, Ornstein set. Just kind of hanging down there. Alright, Chain Snake. Or not? Yeah, fine. So I guess the uh, the chain snake chain is closest to a flail type weapon, which I kind of hope might be a thing in Elden Ring because we've seen whips are coming back. Yeah, they do that too. I was expecting that earlier, and we've seen whips um, appear reappearing in Elden Ring in the footage from um, before E3. Oh, we get we get there. We get okay. That was weird. I shouldn't have jumped. So I'm kind of hoping. This kind of weapon might be an Elden Ring. Not to this capacity, though. This janky and broken. Now, I didn't die to these guys at all earlier. In the first session. Uh, about two and a half weeks ago. So, boy, I'm hoping I don't die now. They can do a weird kind of twisty thing with the next that you got to be careful of. But panic rolling's the worst bloody thing you can do against these guys. Because if they clip you in your iframe, out of your iframes, in instability frames, so another kind of iframe, uh, that's going to hurt. 
It's not cool. Bugger. Come on. Ah, oh, fuck this. Hey, buddy. Get. Get your vomit. And yeah, he'll totally breathe through, through the fire. Like so. I shouldn't have aggroed him. I should have just left him to his own devices. Hey, buddy. No. There's an area over there we're going to have to check out soon. Hopefully, I don't get invaded there. Because it's going to be like the last thing I have to do. There's a lizard that tries to ambush us here. Of course, I throw out a kick then. And I don't throw out one then. There we go. I can't be bothered. I'm just going to be honest. I can't be bothered fighting him properly. Right, so there's going to be two places I have to go once I finish here anyway. And it's to get some armor. And it's uh, to go kill Hawkwood. So uh, Hawkwood, for some reason, decided he wanted to become as dragon. Don't ask me why. But doing this... And waiting a second. And getting this triggers him to, uh, to move back to Farron Keep. Right, yes, yeah. So this guy in front of us, according to the data of it, yeah, um, I don't know who dug it up, but I know it was in the video Lance made of this place. That was going to be the boss. Now, I can't remember the implication if we fought it at that size, or if it's just like a bigger version of it. Yeah, you know, it's a bigger version of the model we would have been fighting against, but, uh, yeah, that would have been something. And that would have been in that tree area I was talking about. That's where the end of this little bit would have joined up to. So instead of the curved little um little incline, there would have just been a giant mess of roots that we would have walked through. Cool. So we'll just do this real quick. Now, I don't remember exactly what this gives us. I think it gives us more embers. Could be wrong. Um, I think that's what lets us buy moss fruit, but I could be super wrong. I'll... What am I saying? I've edited everything. I'm not going to compare it to the old footage. Um, I don't... No, that's from uh, Irifil Dungeon. That's from the Xanthus Ashes. Uh, what else does it give us? I think it's stork dung pies and a few other things, but it's not a lot. No arrows too much. No, definitely no arrows. Ashes. Yeah, those ashes don't really give us much. That said, let's have a chat to Andre, because he's got something to give us now. Oh, you've returned. I was hoping to see you. That crestfallen ass Hawkwood, he handed me this. He's changed a great deal since he left this place. Graven of face, he asked me to give it ye. Well, now that that task is concluded, what would you have me smith today? Oh, but if they were up, uh, but when, but, so. Yeah, nothing. We already filled out his dialogue. Right, so, um, let's have a quick look at some items. I, I won't read the whole thing, but yeah. Dragon Headstone. Which we found back in the first place. A while ago. Um, well, where we started this episode. In part... 18. Yeah. Maybe it was 19. Oh, fucking whatever. Yeah, part 18. Um, stone imbued with the uh, power of the everlasting dragons. Used in a secret rite by dragon worshippers. Something you'll notice is quite consistent between these two at least. Gain ahead of an ancient dragon and emit dragon breath. A transformation that is irreversible until death. Those who chose the path of the dragon strive for perfect imitation. And the dragon head rite is the first step in this grand process. Gain the torso of a dragon and a dragon's roar. A transformation that is irreversible until death. From ancient times, the path of dragon worship was walked by warriors. It is said they envision us dragon peak in the depths of, of their meditation. And at times, they even hear the distant sound of the great bell at the peak. This, uh, this stone so shows signs of a nascent light. Gain the torso of an ancient dragon alongside an arch dragon mirage. More commonly known as a stand. 
The transformation is ir irreversible until death, yet true imitation will require a dragon head as well. I want to be here while we're at it. Bloodstained Swordgrass of Hawkwood, Deserter of the Undead Legion. Tradition traditionally, the Undead Legion Farron sends the gravest of messages using Swordgrass. Come to the mausoleum in Farron. Only one can take the path of the ancient dragons. We're gonna take the we we're we're gonna go meet him after the fact. There's someone else we gotta go see um, before I consider doing that before a little break. Uh, cause the boss of this area might take me a bit. I'm pretty well practiced at Nameless King, but he's tough. Won't be like the levels of, uh, well, won't be to the same degree that Freed's gonna put me through, that's for fucking sure. But Nameless King's a tough boy. Um, hence, uh, we gotta ring that bell soon. So if you kill him fast enough, eh, can't do shit. You can take full damage if you drop in the wrong place, so let's just, you know, do that. That said, this chuckle fuck will notice you regardless. You can't sneak past him. Let's see if we're fast enough. Get fucked. Oh yeah! Stole your twinkling titanite, baby. Let's have a look. We got a lot of this stuff. I haven't used a single boss weapon in this playthrough. If you alert that guy, he'll, sh he'll fucking shoot fireballs at you as you climb. It's kind of lame. Alright. So, um, dead wyvern. Um, the dickhead wyvern we already killed would be hanging out here. Well, on that little outcropping. If we hadn't killed him already, but he's fucked off as consequence. Hey! That looks like a guy. From Dark Souls 1. Now, I forget if this works, so I'm doing this more as a test than anything. So there was a dude named Havel the Rock. He was a pretty tough motherfucker. And he remains a pretty tough motherfucker. He also remains an outstanding poise boy. And you gotta be careful, because even with my 30 health, he will uh, kill me and sunlock me pretty effectively. Oh, I'm getting greedy. So I don't think we can poison him, call it a hunch. Ooh, spacing. Dark Souls 1 taught me well for my use of the halberds. Stone flesh. He's getting it, but whatever. So we're gonna go for a weapon up on the wake up. Totally fucked that up. So while he's blocking, it's very easy to break his block. I think someone implied he has way more stamina than he should. Or than a player character can. So the Hornet Ring would be doing wonders here, but alas. So it, the armor is broken, so we can totally charge us. Fuck, man. That's been a recurring thing in this playthrough, hasn't it? Me fucking up the spacing. Yep, there we go. So as you can see... Ah, stamina, huh? Spacing would be a lot better if I had a hell, but that's for sure. Yeah, so this is only because I'm trying to face tank him, which I shouldn't be doing. It's really dumb. So he's doing a fl he almost did a flame lurker there. He decided he wanted to get caught by uh, some of the level. Nah. A slab. Yeah, you can't get in there, unfortunately. Just nestle in. A little clipping Fu Manchu. Dragon Tooth. And Stone Great Shield. Totally totally went past it. Sorry, took it a second to have a little drink there. Uh, created from an everlasting Dragon Tooth that will never break has durability. Left by Havel himself, along with his boulder-like great shield, grants its wielder resistance to magic and fire. So if you have a look, if we go to equip it, oh, we're on the wrong slot, keep in mind. About nine points. Pretty cool. 
Perseverance, by the way. And the shield. Let's just do that stone thing he was doing. The stone flesh. A tremendously solid and heavy great shield cut from a great slab of stone. Said to be a relic of the legendary Havel the Rock. Along with the dragon tooth. The shield is imbued with a special power reminiscent of Havel himself. So, um... Law theories about if that was Havel, or if that was Havel in Dark Souls 1, or if neither are Havel and there is soldiers, it's, I, who knows. People seem to argue that, well, it can't be Havel in 1 because his soldiers have the ring, but he didn't. But, uh, I don't know if that's the case or not. Idiot. He'll get me. Just give it a second. Let's see if he breathes. Nope. Okay. Damn it. What happens if we do this? Cheeky little fucker. Alright, we're gonna teleport out in a sec. Don't have enough to level up though. So we'll just probably head back uh, to the bonfire. Great magic barrier. The tail which was later interpre interpreted as magic barrier. Greatly increases magic damage absorption by covering the body in a strong white protective coating. Said to be a tale of Havel the Rock, arch enemy of Seath the Scalers. Havel despised magic and was never complacent in preparing means to counter it. Yeah, so the same spell you get in the Great Hollow back in Dark Souls 1. Um, sadly not its Dark Souls 2 version, which weakened Lightning, Dark, and Fire in addition. Ah, oh, I didn't mean to do this, but oh well. Um, that would have been sick, but alas. I'm going to take a quick break, because as I said, the boss might take me a few cracks, and I need a bit of a break for a moment, so I'll see you back there in a little bit. Actually, what am I doing? Fuck that. That's dumb. You're dumb. I'm, get, I'm going to get this dark party started right. Yeah, so Havel really had the dragons, by the way. I should probably just chuck that in. Um, so if that was him... His range uh, sustained him, and he made it to Dragon Peak somehow. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. I don't fucking care about lore implications. <laughs> What's this momentous message? Da 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 da. You're poor, you fuck. <gasps> And perhaps head this way. That would be great. Ah, this is unexpected. Well, I've decided to stop running from my fate. Loathe me all you like. I shall take what makes you dragon. So you've got to keep in mind, he has his Ultra Great Sword back. So if you summon him, um... At our Dragon Peak, you'll notice he has the Bastard Sword, which is also what he has if you attack him in Fire Link. Obviously, we didn't do that because that's dumb. Let's see if we can bleed him out. That'd be cool. So, unfortunately, we cannot outpoison. That moveset is really strong if you uh, have the lag bonus. Aha! Gotcha. You are a dragon. More dragon than I. I wish I'd have, um, I'd have got the sword, because then I could have just styled on his grave after the fact. Uh, that would have been hilarious. So we'll just quickly look at this before we head off to one more place in our dragon pit. Sorry, in Farron Keep. The headstone. Gain the head of a, of a dragon and emit breath alongside an arch dragon mirage. Irreversible until death. Yep. So, offered to a towering dragon. The illusion achieved was the first case of a human imitating the form of an ancient dragon and it revealed the smallness of human existence. The road to be old dragons is long and arduous and only one can complete the journey. Alright, one more place to go. I'll probably cut this part. See you on the bridge. So we're back here. Now your clue's meant to be 
that Stray Demon will make Havel's Ring. A severely neutered version of it, but Havel's Ring nonetheless. So whose armor might this be? Havel's, of course. Damn it, fucking menu. Armor, as if hewn from a giant boulder. Highly protective, but excessively heavy. The warriors who followed Havel the Rock never flinched, nor retreated from battle, crushing any foe that stood in their way. I wore a lot of this back in Dark Souls 1 on my first playthrough, because boy oh boy, is it quite helpful. That said, um... Can't exactly roll like this. So yeah, keep that in mind. Still looks pretty cool though. Let's have a look at that poise. 50 poise. Um, so if you do rock up to a, um... One of the thieves with their little fucking butter knife, so... Nah. What did you expect? To not stagger? That's dumb. That's really dumb. Alright, I'm gonna change back into my normal, normal stuff. I'm going to do a little sync test. I'll see you guys back at Arch Dragon Peak for the grand finale of the Arch Dragon Peak arc that should be like two episodes long. Where are my fucking shoes? Where are my dark? No. Where? Mor uh, fucking mourns. There we go. Piece of armor from each of my favorite NPCs. Yeah. All right. See you back at Arch Dragon Peak. Alright, time to fight one of my favorite bosses in the whole game. That said, let's just go bully this guy for totally the last time. One thing I forgot to mention was he can totally summon ha Havel, by the way, but, um, well, either of them can, but didn't happen this time. So Hawkwood summon sign is obviously gone because he's dead. Everything is at peace. One thing I forgot to mention was they actually modeled this place twice over, which sounds a bit odd, but for context, they modeled it, um, they modeled all of our Dragon Peak. The hell was that? They modeled our Dragon Peak, you know, pristine and perfect, undestroyed, and then they, uh, damaged it up, aged it up, and it looks like this. So that's pretty cool. Neat little behind the scenes thing I learned. Pretty sure that was from Lance's video as well. So yeah, right at the end of there, there was meant to be that boss, there was meant to be a boss room. But we got this instead. Alright. So that's why there were uh, mid-air bloodstains. The weirdest part is though, these bloodstains are where you pick up your souls. So um, it's kind of weird there's some mid-air. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. That item there is a slab, those will be some congratulation messages, you have cleared us Dragon Peak. Alright, so let's get this out of the way. I'm probably not going to do this first try. I've totally beaten him as soul level 14. I'm pretty well practiced at him. And generally speaking, very rarely done first phase. But first time for everything.
Let's go. Now he's probably going to do the jump back. Oh no, he's gone for the slam right away, huh? So, King of the Storm. Alright, here we go. Typically, this is what I do for this attack. I go for the run. I totally fucked that up though, because I hit dodge way too late. Normally, he doesn't do that immediately. So, you're not going to get many hits in. When it trains its head back like that, it's gone for the fire breath. You normally get a couple of hits in. We are fucking chunking it, though. Now, you got to keep an eye on the Nameless King more than King of the Storm, to be honest. So he's going for a jump. You can tell based on the way he kind of does that little duck. We'll get one in, not more than that. That's his slam. He typically won't go for a second. The camera can be very fucky, but I'm getting pretty lucky. He's going for the lightning again. That looks super dumb. Ideally, you... Yeah, you've got to chase him quite a bit. It's like mid here. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Yep. Didn't, uh, didn't have much of a chance there. That was mine. That. Okay. Good to know I am still too handy by accident. So, it's unlikely I'm going to use all the Estes fighting him. So, it's better to just stay topped off. So, he is quite good at going for some extra swings. But generally, Nameless King is pretty fair. In fact, I like him a lot because he's not absurdly fast. There's some more methodicalness to this fight um, instead, compared to some of the others. You can see the hit that keeps getting me though. I keep eating it because I'm not respecting him enough. There we go. This is going well. I'm probably going to die. I'm going to heal immediately just in case. Slam. By the way, his weapon, Dragon Slayer Sword Spear, I fucking love. One of my favorite in the game. Dodge. There we go. It's really just the test of not getting greedy. I think we've seen all his moveset. He's gone for the slam. Yeah. That's the part. That, that's the extension to it. That, um, oh, that's the last move. That charge has a slight lingering hitbox, so you've got to be careful. Yeah, so the gust of wind as well. Those were technically panic rolls, even though I had it totally under control. So I thought this guy recently... Oh, that's the only other move. Um, as a caster. As an int caster with some dark magic. And as a strength build with a great hammer and great shield. You can totally tank his hits. But don't expect it to be like Artorias in Dark Souls 1. Alright, Nameless King. Okay. Let's get... Let's make this last hit count. And to think that guy kicked my ass so much back in the day. <laughs> four years ago, I tried fighting. Yeah, it would have been a bit over four years ago. I was bashing my head against him. 
and I, there was a bunch of characters that I just never beat them on. Now I can do it pretty consistently, as you can see. It's just not getting greedy. That's the main thing. But yeah, you can see it's not like, say, Abyss Watches where it's quite fast, or even Pontiff where he just never stops swinging half the time. Um, also, the music itself, really cool, reminiscent of Demon Souls, which is awesome. So this is our reward. Getting the privilege of being in the middle area. Alright, that, that went really fucking well. Fantastic. Come on, hurry up. Please. Oh, well, we can't be invaded here, at least. And wait for the souls. There we go. Yeah. So we're not among them, thankfully. Uh, didn't have that happen to us. I beat him first try. Kind of sad in a way. It's like that, uh, it's like back when I was, um, doing Bloodborne. And in, in the first part I mentioned, yeah, I don't, it's not like I dislike Creed or Gale, but I just don't have an attachment to fighting them. And then I beat them in mid-air first try on my big, strength, bulky, halberd build. And it's like, oh, I didn't get any of the struggle. And uh, it kind of sucked in that regard. Nameless King, though, I can get to pretty easily if I really want to fight him again. But yeah, he's just a really fun fight. And you saw pretty much, well, basically the best camera you're going to get for him. So there's nothing actually around here. Um, nothing to do. Oh, and I never pointed out. You can see the sun, and you can also see the moon. How about that? Yeah, there's nothing really... These are the bloodstains from the fight, I guess. Or oh, that's some other shenanigans, I don't know. I guess they'd probably correlate to what's, uh, what's back there. But yeah, there's nothing down here. They like to put a lot of stuff around here on mods, make it a pseudo-gauntlet area. But yeah. And here we have it. Dragon Slayer set of Ornstein from Dark Souls 1. Gold Lion Helm. Golden Lion Helm associated with Dragon Slayer Ornstein from the Age of the Gods and imbued with Strength of Lightning. In the Dragonless Age, this knight who long guarded the ruined cathedral left the land in search of the Nameless King. So the implication being he, he fucked off at Anno Londo in Dark Souls 1 and yeah, you fight an illusion of him with presumably the real smoke. So, you know, spoiler I guess if you haven't played Dark Souls 1. Doesn't take any way, anything away from it. Raises um, questions about old Dragon Slayer from DS2, more so though. So yeah, full set. It was weapon and everything. And of course there's the whole lore thing of, well you find his armor here, and his spear there, because he became the Storm Drake. Which, uh, I guess I could buy, but it seems kind of weird. The, the main, I think the main fucking belief behind it, the, the main thing, the main linchpin on this whole theory is, there's no body. There's no body in two spots, and there's always a body, so he must have become the bird. Which honestly, yeah, look, I don't know. I believe it more than, um, you know, Solaire becoming a worm. Right, so we can just fuck off out of here now. See you, Dark Souls 2. Alright, two levels. Um, there's some sick armor I'll farm up for being Nameless King set. I'll show off what, what we can make out of the soul, which is some pretty good shit. It's some pretty cool stuff. So, let's have a quick look. Crown of the Nameless King of a Nameless King, who was the ally of the Ancient Dragons. This golden crown, buried amidst lost, amidst long strands of bristling ash, is said to closely resemble that of the First Lord. Dragon scales are razor sharp and cannot be burned. Hmm. These golden bracelets, together with the golden breastplate and crown, are said to be closely, said to closely resemble those of the First Lord. Same thing. It's a pretty cool set. I really do like it a lot. Alright, well, fuck it. Farewell, 
We are a hashtag dex build after all. Right, so... We can make a few cool weapons from, uh, Nameless King's Soul. If I wasn't, you know, playing this kind of build, I'd contemplate making the Sword Spear, which I fucking love. Definitely not the best weapon in the world, but it's cool. It's really awesome. I've had a lot of fun with it in the past. Let's just whack on anything that means we're not going to fat roll for now. Oh, sorry, I skipped that. Hold on, let's drive it again. Is as if it were but yesterday. We did all we could to spare her from them. Much has happened since. Mayhap I should apprise thee of what the thin light of these eyes might reveal to the eyeless firekeeper. Scenes of betrayal, things never intended for her ken, visions of this. Ages end. Yeah, so, um, sorry about <laughs> forgetting about that dialogue. That's for the eyes of the fire people, quite obviously. Miracle of the Nameless King, allied to the ancient dragons, calls for furious bolts of lightning. Once a slayer of dragons, the former king and war god tamed a storm drake, on which he led a lifetime of battle. This miracle is likely a tale of their bond. Storm Curve Sword. Imbued with the strength of the Storm Drake. The Nameless King fought beside the Storm Drake in countless battles. When the Great Beast fell, the ancient king oh, sorry, the, the king claimed his soul, as was custom in the Age of the Gods. And it's just the spin slash with a cool tornado effect. So yeah, that cutscene was obviously meant to invoke the whole on seeing on on seeing and smoke thing where they use you know, usurp, take their power. The power of the one that fell. A dragon hunting weapon from the Age of the Gods, the earliest form of cross spear, serving as both sword and spear. Its owner was the Nameless King, a deific hunter of dragons. The sword spear is imbued with lightning, of which he was the heir. Falling bolt, hold the sword spear high in the air to summon fierce lightning that descends upon distant foes. It also buffs the sword, which is pretty cool. So, Hawkwood, that stubborn ass is gone. Just shy of leveling up. Damn you. I think I, yeah, I got to 89 last time because I killed the invader. I killed basically the same amount of everything. I don't see, nothing to get up there. Um, anything I've got to do. Patches doesn't have anything to worry about yet. Um, yeah. Well, there's only one real place to go, barring the wolf and freed, but we'll do them after the fact. So, I guess I know where I'll see you guys next. I'll farm up that up. Ah, oh, fuck it, who cares? I'm not going to be using these souls. Let's just get it now. Let's just whack it on real quick. I have my outro going and everything. I knew I should have just bought it. It's on the heavier end, right? There we go. Looks a little more fitting if you're hollow, but still. Doesn't quite fit our guy with the uh, beard and the hair, but still. Very cool armor. You can use the chest piece for uh, a Karthus cosplay, so keep that in mind. Alright. You very soon. Chuckle fuck. Alright, like I was saying, guess there's only one place to go now. Other than back to the painted world, but that'll, uh, that'll be after the fact. So. Once I find some boots I like the look of. Alvis. Sure, that'll suffice, whatever. That'll work. Alright. One place left. Wonder where that could be.